Well, it's Long Haul Tanker here, and I've just finished up my shaving videos, and I'm going to, I'm in the midst of my post-shave cleanup. The main biggest part of that is the stropping. And so I'm using my boker, the same one that I shaved with, and we're just going to do a quick demonstration here. Uh, and so this is a uh, straight razor design, I think it says. Yes. Uh, uh, this is a uh, horse uh, English bridle. Uh, it's, so it's genuine leather, English bridle. Um, and this is part of my uh, Dear, Marky, Dear Mikey Diaries. Uh, <laughs> I hope you don't mind me saying that. I just think it's funny as heck. Uh, and so here we have a linen uh, portion to the strop, and I'm going to do about um, 30 strokes, 40 strokes. And I'm just laying the, you got a firm, you got a good, strong, uh, I say strong, you want a firm, stable grip on your razor. And you, you go down, uh, as you go down to the, uh, the, the uh, piece of material, whether it be leather, whether it be linen, whatever it is you're using, you always head down spine first, spine first. And then as your spine touches, uh, you begin to lay flat the razor on the uh, material, uh, but you start your motion as well and come down. And you're just going to lay it on there. You're not putting any uh, extra pressure at all. In fact, you're just using... Uh, more or less the weight of the blade, but do keep the spine and the edge in contact with the material at all times. Don't raise the spine and leave the edge in contact. So you come and you always come up off, and these are what they call uh, edge trailing strokes. And so you've got your spine down first, and then your edge is trailing, and you do a you do a flip and you come back the other way. Uh, and just with, and you leave the spine in contact with the material when you do your, um, your turning motion uh, and don't come down too hard. A lot of people, and I've never been one of them, two things you gotta watch out for is damaging your material, cutting slices into the linen or the leather, whatever it is you're using. Do not cut slices into it uh, and the other thing is is that not to use too much pressure on the turns uh, so that you are damaging the edge you're pushing too hard on the back end of the razor uh, that will damage the edge and so you're just doing your just do it lightly all right let's go over to the leathers i'm using the english bridle get it to stop swinging there. And I'm coming down spine first. And you want to do, now the way most people count a lap is up and back is one. That's fine, that's a lap. I don't count laps, I count strokes, uh, which is one up is one, one back is two. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That way I put a number in my head. Um, so I, if I'm going to go to 50, for example, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and so on until 50. And I stop. well, that's 25 laps. That's simple math. Instead of going one, two, three, four, now that, that would drive me, especially in the truck. When I'm in the truck, I have to have a simple mechanism that'll keep my mind focused without driving me crazy. If I counted laps and not strokes, it would drive me crazy. And so anyway, let's move over to the strop that I want. So we got a straight razor design English bridle here, and that's about a $120 strop. Uh, the one you have that I sent you, Mikey, is a genuine leather uh, and it's about $20, and it's not a what you would call a top quality strop, uh, but it's flat. It's flat and it's smooth. And this is, and you learn as you go along in this uh, hobby as well that different strop materials uh, have different feels 
of draw. Some are faster, some are slower. Uh, Latigo leather is slower. Uh, now here, what we have is a Kaneyama 80,000. Let me see if I can bring this into the video. Kaneyama 80,000. And it's, it's a, a three-piece drop. You've got your linen piece. You've got a suede leather piece. And then you have a horse shell or cordovan uh, piece right here. And this is a, a $400 strap, my friend. Uh, and so uh, good job, good money. Wife working, double income, money put away in the bank. You can get a $400 Kaneyama as long as they're still in existence. I understand the guy that makes these in Japan is elderly. And so, uh, oops, I see something here on the floor. Got one of the little rivets that has come out of the uh, English bridle. So I've got to hunt that down and fix it. So this is a suede and it's generally regarded as a cleaning strop. And so you do your uh, linen first, followed by the, uh, the suede. And you put on 100 strokes, you know, 50 laps if you want. That's what I kind of do on this piece. And it's got just a little bit of a pull to it. And as I say, different materials will have different draws uh, on it. They'll be uh, slower, faster. Uh, material and uh, as I, this is about my normal speed maybe more like this is my normal speed uh, whoops no damage got my edge up I kind of lost my train of thought there for a second but I could also go faster I'll speed it up but here you gotta be real careful not to lose control of the edge, damage the material. Uh, you wanna keep your material as smooth and as flat uh, without indentation, mark or scratch or cut. And so you're using, I'm using lightweight, I got a firm grip. I got my razor under control. Yeah, I felt myself going out of control there, so I stopped. And you always come up off the leather. If you ever feel out of control, come up off the leather. Now we're moving to the cordovan. And this is a very slick, very smooth material. And all of this, now what the purpose of stropping is, is not to sharpen per se, the edge of the razor, it brings it back into alignment because whenever you shave that very ultra fine edge, the whiskers, which are reported in the writing, are as thick as a piece of copper wire. And that's why there's so much effort that's made into moisturizing your beard. Uh, and it will bring out of alignment uh, your razor indentations and so forth on the edge on the steel at the edge and so this brings it back now you can use polishing compounds and the and the strop that I sent you Mikey on the uh, back side if I remember correctly is uh, green in color and that's because it's infused with uh, green paste I took the uh, big thick gray, uh, green crayon of um, I think it's half micron. Uh, and so uh, give it, if you so desire, that'll help keep your razor, uh, I won't say sharpened, although some say it does sharpen, but it keeps it at, a, brings it into alignment with, at a high polish. It'll add to the polishing uh, and that will help keep the razor sharp until it needs another honing, which... We'll get into that at a future time. So there's that. All right, I'm done with the uh, boker and I'm gonna end the video here. And so I hope that gives you an idea of what a uh, little bit is involved uh, in the honing. Uh, do take your time. In fact, let me just go here. Let me go back over to the English bridle. 
and just take your time and focus on it. Speed has nothing to do, or very light pressure. Just focus on keeping your stroke under control, not to damage the material, not to use too much pressure, uh, and bend the blade, that's the, or, or uh, yeah, bend the edge. And so light strokes up and down and focus on technique rather than speed. Speed is not the goal. And so that will bring just these light strokes going slowly will bring the edge into alignment. And that's what you're looking for when you're stropping. And some people will even stop in the middle of a shave if they have their strop positioned nearby uh, and put on 20 or 30 uh, laps uh, in the midst of a shave uh, to realign their edge. And that's, that's not a bad thing. So that's all I've got for now. And these have been the Dear Mikey Diaries of Long Haul Tanker. And I will talk to you later.